This is a quick note in response to Paul Rhodes regarding geometry. I'll start here with some photos of books I've been looking at and then some screenshots illustrating examples of composing on the armature of rectangles. And the question is whether or not to use what Jay Hambidge describes as static rectangles or dynamic rectangles, which would lead into dynamic symmetry. Static rectangles are described as being based on whole number ratios like three by five squares or four by five squares, whereas dynamic rectangles are described as root rectangles with ratios not based on whole numbers. For instance, the root two rectangle is one by 1.4142. So there's a few books explaining the difference between static rectangles and the dynamic rectangles, which was the secret of the Greeks, which they derived from the study of nature's growth patterns and forms and from human body proportions you've seen the Vitruvian man. So essentially the question concerning composition is whether or not it's entirely intuitive, in which case any attempts to show underlying scaffolding and incidences of intersections would be entirely coincidental, or if there's actually a theory of aesthetics underpinning the armature of all rectangles in general, but specifically dynamic rectangles in particular. Does any of this matter, and if so, why? Through the examples I've included here, it's obviously evident that all of the old masters from Raphael, Titian, Tintoretto, through Caravaggio, Boucher, Fragonard, David, Rubens, Poussin, Puvis de Chavon, they've all utilized the internal geometry, scaffolding, and armature upon which they built their compositions and harmonized them in a symmetrical unity. Now, if anyone's claiming after seeing the reverse engineered schematics that the artists didn't actually employ geometry in their design layout plans, that's just that it's just a coincidence that some things lined up with certain angles clearly that is gaslighting which is not uncommon in the art world some teachers do not want you to know their secrets but paul rhodes is keen to let you peek behind the curtain paul rhodes has been generous enough to show and tell and demonstrate all of the ins and outs and all of his thinking behind why he's doing what he's doing and he recently was kind enough to show us with his Massacre of the Innocents some aspects of the underlying geometry that serves as a scaffolding upon which his composition was built. It's been a real pleasure to watch him explain aspects of composition, especially regarding color and space and light and dark and having warm patches and cool patches of color dispersed throughout the foreground, middle ground, and background. He's not working in a photorealism trump loy illusion He's using the full range of values and saturations of colors spread everywhere across the plane, and it's pretty fascinating. He's not just a human camera copy machine. He's talking about what he's seeing, using colors and shapes as a language, and together with the underlying geometrical components of the composition, yields rather remarkable results as evidence in his multitudes of videos featuring his large paintings. So my basic question for Mr. Rhodes is since it's obvious that the old masters employed geometry in their designs and that he himself utilizes the inherent armature scaffolding implied inside of the rectangle, does it matter the ratio of the rectangle? Is the dynamic rectangle, rectangle superior to the static rectangle? And can compositions be improved by utilizing such techniques, formulas, schemes, and plans? I'm not suggesting that dynamic symmetry is an automatic shortcut and that the armature just does the work for you. I'm just wondering to what extent it matters whether or not you use static rectangles or dynamic rectangles. It's clear that some paintings look like they were explicitly derived from the confines that these scaffolding imposes upon the forms and that the figures themselves derive out of these subdivisions of diagonals and their reciprocals and rebatements. From what I gather, first you imagine a composition in your mind's eye, then you thumbnail sketch out the layout then you impose borders on its length and height, and then you subdivide the rectangle with diagonals and divisions, and you adjust the initial concept sketch accordingly, tweaking it and nudging bits and pieces here and there so that the arrangement is in space and is harmonious according to the ratios found in a natural world demonstrated by the platonic solids and ratios in the human skeleton and growth patterns of pine cones and nautilus shells and sunflowers. Now, not wanting to come off as a pedantic, sycophantic pariah, I'm including at the end of this video some of my own work demonstrating drawing from life without any of these geometrical concerns in mind, and also a few thumbnail sketch compositions based on underlying geometry of static rectangles. 
I haven't yet gotten into dynamic rectangles, and I'm wondering if Paul Rhodes would think it would be useful to do so. I'm not trying to be dogmatic about any particular way. I'm just looking for best practices.